in this given problem a set s is given to you and the elements of set are nothing but elements of sequence means terms of sequence then we have to find infimum of s so this sequence minus 1 raised to the power n this has this sequence has plus 1 if or minus 1 if n is even if n is even if n is odd this sequence has only two terms plus 1 or minus 1 alternatively and n raised to the power minus 1 raised to the power n this one will be n raised to the power 1 or positive 1 if n is even and n raised to the power minus 1 if n is odd further we can write n or 1 upon n if n is even and if n is odd as n tending to infinity this will goes to infinity and zero so infimum is lowest number infimum is lowest number or term so zero zero is lowest option c is correct a sequence sn is given to you in terms of sine function for n equals to 1 2 3 because of domain of sequence is set of natural number now set of all subsequence limit of sn we have to find so how to solve this we will try to find some elements or members of this sequence so put n equals to 1 then 2 3 and so on and try to find some elements of this sequence when you put n equals to 1 we have sine pi upon 3 means sine 60 and value of sine 60 is root 3 by 2 when n equals to 2 sine 2 pi upon 3 means sine 120 and sine 120 you can write sine 90 plus 30 it will equals to minus of cos 30 and cos 30 is root 3 by 2 so second term is minus root 3 by 2 first term is 3 by 2 and in this fashion you can check third term will be 0 fourth term will be minus of 3 by 2 and again minus 3 by 2 and then 0 and this sequence follow this pattern so subsequence limit of sn will be option d because of we have a set root 3 by 2 again root 3 by 2 0 then minus root 3 by 2 again minus root 3 by 2 then 0 and repeat again root 3 by 2 root 3 by 2 and 0 so subsequential limits of sn given in option d in this problem every sequence sn of real number has a subsequence which is bounded monotonic convergent or divergent there are four options if we consider a sequence sn as e raised to the power n then this sequence is not bounded not bounded or not bounded above not bounded above you can say more precisely not bounded above above and if you take subsequence subsequence of sn is also not bounded not bounded so option a discarded every sequence has this is a statement every sequence has monotonic subsequence i am saying every sequence either it is constant or non-constant it has a monotonic subsequence option b 
इज करेक्ट सिक्वेंस सबसेक्वेंस ऑफ सिक्वेंस मे बी कन्वर्जेंट और डाइवर्जेंट मे बी कन्वर्जेंट और डाइवर्जेंट सो दिस ऑप्शन सी इज नॉट ट्रू एंड ऑल्सो डी इज नॉट करेक्ट बट इफ दिस गिवेन प्रॉब्लम इज आस्ड इन दिस मैनर एवरी बाउंडेड एवरी बाउंडेड सिक्वेंस ऑफ रियल नंबर हेज अ सबसेक्वेंस विच इज कन्वर्जेंट देन ऑप्शन सी विल बी करेक्ट दिस कम्स फ्रॉम द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ बोलजानो वेस्ट स्टेटमेंट दैट इज एवरी इनफाइनाइट बाउंडेड सेट एवरी इनफाइनाइट बाउंडेड सेट हैज लिमिट पॉइंट एवरी इनफाइनाइट बाउंडेड सेट हैज अ लिमिट पॉइंट सो सिक्वेंस इज ऑल्सो इनफाइनाइट सेट ऑल्सो इफ सिक्वेंस बिकम्स बाउंडेड देन इट विल बी कन्वर्जेंट बिकॉज इट हैज अ लिमिट पॉइंट given problem a infinite uh, series given and we have to check convergence of this infinite series if i make it this uh, series as a positive term series so i can write 1 upon under root 2 n plus 1 and over summation running from 1 to infinity and uh, this one you can take as un so un is decreasing and going to zero u n decreasing and going to zero according to leibniz test original series is convergent original series convergent but after making this series as a positive term series so you can apply test for positive term series if you apply p test according to p test this series is equivalent to 1 upon under root n and 1 upon under root n is divergent why divergent because of 1 upon under root n you can write as 1 upon n raised to the power half value of this is p p is less than 1 so by p series test this positive term series is divergent given series is convergent but uh, absolute series is divergent so this series is conditionally convergent option b is correct in this given problem r and c denoting a standard ordered set set of real number and set of complex number we have to find dimension of the vector space c 14 over plus and subtraction over the field of real r as you have studied c square c square with respect to plus and scalar multiplication you can understand this is a vector space vector space so dimension over c over c is 2 but dimension over r is 4 how for if you have a complex number a plus b iota and c plus d iota this order pair belongs to c square to write this order pair we have four position 1 2 3 and 4 we are independent at these four position so dimension of c square over r is 4 according to this or same dimension of c 14 over r is 28 you may not uh, confuse from multiplication and subtraction it is given in the question paper as same and i wrote here so it may be ring it may be other algebraic expression or any algebraic structure but uh, this is forming vector space if this is forming vector space take an element how element of c14 will be an order pair of 14 constituents and for each constituents you are independent at two choices according to this 
डायमेंशन ऑफ दिस वैक्टर स्पेस ओवर आर इज ट्वेंटी एट ऑप्शन सी इज करेक्ट इन दिस गिवेन प्रॉब्लम फाइव इज अ लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन डिफाइन फ्रॉम आर क्यूब टू आर स्क्वेयर एंड स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ फाइव इज दिस we have to find rank of phi if you can observe output x minus y y minus z this constituent not containing z but and this not containing x so this is not containing z and this is containing z so dimension of range space uh, dimension of range space of phi is 2 and this is rank rank of 5 but you can verify to by finding matrix representation of this uh, linear transformation how to find a matrix uh, representation of this so 1 0 0 this is first basis element 1 0 1 sorry 0 1 0 and the third element is 0 0 1 now try to find image of first basis element so image of first basis element 1 0 0 equals to subtraction of first two yeah, it means 1 and subtraction of last two is 0 now write this image in terms of linear combination of 1 0 and 0 1 so it will be 1 into e1 plus 0 into e2 so matrix representation is of the size 2 cross 3 first column is 1 0 now 5 0 1 0 subtraction of first two minus 1 then last two is 1 so minus 1 and 1 minus 1 and 1 then 5 of last element image of last element will be 0 comma minus 1 so this is 0 comma minus 1 so this matrix has two pivot element means rank of this because of matrix representation for image so rank of 5 equals to 2 this problem can be asked what is the nullity of this so by rank nullity theorem rank plus nullity equals to 3 so nullity because of rank is 2 nullity is 1 but we have to find rank only option c will be right one we have to find rank of this given matrix apply elementary row operation as r3 R three minus two times R one. So what we will get? There is no change in first row. So one two three five. Second row is also remain same. One four one. Third row will be zero one four and minus two. And last row you can apply R four as R four minus R one. So last uh, last row will be zero, two, eight, two. Now apply R three. A rows over R three. R three minus R two. And R four. Change in R four as R four minus two times R two. Apply these two row operations simultaneously. So first row is same one two three five. Second row zero one four one. Third row zero 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 and minus three. Last row zero zero. Zero and zero. At this stage, uh, this is pivot element. This is second pivot element, and this is third pivot element. 
we have three pivot element or three pivot row uh, pivot rows or pivot columns so rank of this matrix is 3 and nullity is 1 by rank nullity theorem or you can understand uh, this is free row free from pivot so this is the nullity this become nullity so rank of this matrix is 3 option c will be correct we have given a series and we have to find the radius of convergence of this power series there are two types of method you can use any one r equals to r means radius of convergence limit n tending to infinity u n upon u n plus 1 limit of this expression is radius of convergence or you can use r equals to 1 upon limit n tending to infinity u n raised to the power 1 upon n these two methods are applicable when series given in in this format a n x raised to the power n if series is in the format a n x raised to the power uh, some uh, uh, you can check f x any function then this expression becomes 1 upon limit n tending to infinity u n raised to the power 1 upon f x f x or f n whatever you can call f n this particular uh, for this particular problem r equals to 1 upon limit n tending to infinity u n this is our u n 1 upon 2 raised to the power n u n is 1 upon 2 raised to the power n this is our u n and raised to the power 1 upon 2 n it will become 1 upon limit n tending to infinity one upon two raised to the power n raised to the power sorry upon two upon n n cancel out by n so we have one upon one upon two and this is inside square root so what we have under root 2 so under root 2 means option c is your radius of convergence in this given problem phi is euler phi function and we have to find this underlying value so how to apply euler phi function suppose we have to find value of phi n make prime factorization of this n means p1 raised to the power k2 into p2 raised to the power k2 and so on so phi n value of phi n equals to n into 1 minus 1 upon p1 means prime 1 minus 1 upon p2 this is second prime 1 minus 1 upon p3 using third prime and so on up to whenever you cannot use all primes we have to find value of 2700 so prime factorization of this one will be 3 raised to the power 3 into 10 square 10 square you can write 2 raised to the power 2 into 5 raised to the power 2 now apply 5 so 5 on both sides value of this one will be 1 minus 1 upon 3 3 is first prime second is 1 minus 1 upon 2 and third is 1 minus 1 upon 5 now this value equivalent to 3 square 2 square sorry 3 cube and 5 square you will get from this basis 2 upon 3 into 1 upon 2 into 4 upon 5 now 1 power less 1 power less and 1 power less what we have we have 3 square 
2 into 5 into 2 into 4. This value we have. So you can collect all powers of prime. So 3 square, 2 raised to the power 4 and 5. Now, because we have to find value of phi of phi 2, 7, 0, 0. Now apply again phi on this. Phi on this will equals to 3 square 2 raised to the power 4 and 5 1 minus 1 upon 3 1 minus 1 upon 2 and 1 minus 1 upon 5. What we have? 3 square 2 raised to the power 4 and 5 into 2 upon 3 1 upon 2 into 4 upon 5 1 power less 1 power less and 5 cancel out by 5 we have 3 into 2 raised to the power 3 into 2 into 4 this value equals to 3 into 2 raised to the power 6 because 1 power here and 2 power here to, uh, so 2 1 3 and 3 6 now this value equals to 3 into 64 this value 3 4 is 12 3 6 is 18 or 119 192 option D is correct In this problem, Zn denotes the set of all residue classes of integer modulo n, Z13, Z13 with respect to addi addition modulo 13 and multiplication modulo 13. We have to find inverse of 6 bar. 6 bar is residue class of 6 or you can easily say equivalence class of 6. So multiplicative inverse of 6 or you can write easily 6 is a number is a number you can say x after multiplying these two and dividing by 13 we have 1 if such number exists then we say inverse of 6 is x so if we put 6 into 4 suggestions from options we are getting 24 after dividing by 13 we are not getting 1 if we take 7 6 7 is 42 after dividing by 13 we are not getting 1 6 into 9 we have 54 dividing by 13 not getting 1 but 6 into 11 we are getting 66 and 66 dividing by 13 we are getting 1 so 11 bar or simply 11 is the multiplicative inverse of 6 option D is correct in this problem there are two function fx and gx confusing point is as mod is appearing in this problem and we have to check linearly dependency or independency over a certain interval intervals are not same but we know something about mod function mod function is positive when x is positive mod function is positive when x is positive so first we are checking for positive values fx is x raised to the power 4 and gx equals to x into x cube it also becomes x raised to the power 4 for all x greater than 0 now you can check fx and gx not are different they are same so what linearly independent or dependent word says if two vector u and v vectors or function you can consider anything said to be linearly dependent if anyone can be written as a scalar multiple of other scalar multiple of other so you can write gx as a scalar multiple a scalar is 1 so fx and gx is 
linearly dependent linearly dependent and dependent only is given in option a so option a will be correct and in in other problems or in other options you can observe for positive value you can take uh, 0.5 at 0.5 these options b c and d can be discarded so correct option is option a